the last thing though is years ago, you know, up to a decade ago, distributors would take your movies on and they would not only be the people who would put them, you know, into the various platforms. In that case, you know, either DVD or television, theatrical, now it's streaming. So the distributor does that. The question is who does the marketing, i.e. who creates the audience awareness? So years ago, the distributors used to do that. They used to say, okay, we'll represent your film. We'll license it for whatever, 10 years or something, but we'll put money behind it and create audience awareness. We're good at that. We do the marketing. Today, they don't do that anymore. They don't want to take a financial risk. It's too expensive to do that for whatever reason. They don't believe in the movies. Once in a while, they do that. But for the most part, they don't really put any time, effort, or money into marketing which means that they'll put your movies into the platforms, but they won't create audience awareness. So you as the filmmaker, you still have to do that. You have to create your own audience awareness. So you have to go do your social media campaigns and your outreach campaigns to the coaches like in Rudy and do all that kind of stuff and send them to the platforms that the distributors put up. So now if you're like any, anybody else, you're going to say, wait a second, time out, Jeff, wait a second. You just said that if you give it to a distributor and they stick it on a AVOD platform, which using an aggregator, which I'm going to get charged for anyways, they're going to get 30% of the revenue that's coming back, but yet they're not going to do any of the marketing. I still have to do my own marketing. What the heck do I need them for? Like, why don't, if I'm going to do all the heavy lifting, which is doing all the marketing, why do I need them to take 30%? Let me just use an aggregator or somebody else, stick it on the same platform. And I'll do all the audience awareness and do all the work. And I don't want to give them 30% of my revenue. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting into self-distribution. That's what self-distribution is. Somebody mm. who says that, who says, hey, I don't want, I want to cut that level out. And even though I'm not going to get onto Netflix because Netflix will only go through these distributors, chances are Netflix isn't going to buy my movie anyways, or maybe I could put it through an aggregator or something else. I'll figure out a different way to do that. But if I'm going to go do all the marketing and awareness creation and all that hard work, which we talked about having to do, then I don't want to have a 30% partner who's doing nothing and taking 30% of my revenue. I want to do it more directly. I'm going to go more direct to the audience. Maybe it'll be a smaller audience, but it'll be more impactful. I'm going to go directly to them and I'm going to see if I can drive that business myself. And that is self-distribution. Okay. Now you have to be a real entrepreneur to do that. And here's the biggest disconnect. All right. The big disconnect is filmmakers say, I love that idea, but I'm a filmmaker. I make films. I'm an artist. That's a marketing function. That's for business people. I am an artist and I don't do that. I like the idea. It's, it's a nice thought to be able to, you know, cut that expense out and all that kind of stuff. But there's, I, I, it's not who I am. I'm, I'm not a marketing person. Number one, I have no training in it. Number two, I have no experience in it, no skills. Number three, even if I did, I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't, the, the idea of selling films, that's a turnoff to me. I like the, I signed up for this because I want to make films. I love to be creative. Selling them, other people do that. I don't want to do that. And that is why most people don't do self-distribution because one, they don't know how to do it. And two, they don't want to do it. And three, there's a cost to doing it. All right. So they go through these distribution deals and a lot of them get screwed, unfortunately. Um, so kind of the nature of the indie film business. Now, I want to ask you one question after I just went through all that. Do you still want to make a movie? <laughs> Here's the good news, Michael. The good news is now you know what's involved yeah. beforehand, okay? Yeah. So there's this whole glamorous dream and lovely idea of you know being this successful filmmaker, but now I just basically walked you through the reality of it. Now, there are many successful indie filmmakers who have made great movies and have made money, but that's a very, very small percentage of the overall industry most indie films actually don't make money. Most of them struggle with distribution. Most of them struggle with production. 
I would say one out of 10 actually breaks even or makes some money. 10%. And that, I might, that might be high. Might be one out of five. I'm or sorry, one out of 20. Might be 5%. All right. So it used to be 10%. It could be lower now. Um, now, depends how good a filmmaker you are, how much you control your budget, how much you control your distribution, how involved you are. There's a lot to it. But like any other business, you can't just look at one component, which is the making of the movie. You have to look at the entire component, like the, high, the whole gambit, which is the selling and, and marketing of the movie in addition to the making of it. And we didn't even talk about how to get it financed yet. That's a whole other discussion. But well, we, we did talk about financing. Yeah, oh, sorry, you did. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. You know, I still want to make a movie. I'm a lot happier and um, grateful that I'm informed what, what's part of the process. Um, but just something that comes to mind is just you got to put the right people around you Absolutely. if that's what you want to do. Like any other business, you just got to surround yourself with a good team of people who know what they're doing and you can trust them. I agree with you. That is very insightful of you to say that. And this is a hugely, making and selling movies is a gigantically collaborative process. You need Making it, you know, you're going to have 60, 70 people potentially, or, you know, even 20 or 30. That's a lot of collaboration goes there. So you have to gel with the people, have good chemistry, good collaboration, trust, and then selling the same thing. You'll have people who work with you on marketing and placing on the platforms. And so like any other business, you're right. You have to be with a good team, but you have to vet them and make sure you're with good people. Yeah. And you can't put too much on, on your plate. You can't try and take on too many jobs, you know, like you said, just self-distribution, you know, for some people, they don't want to do that because it's just, I mean, too honestly, too Jeff, daunting. it's too daunting. Yeah. Out of all the things that we spoke about and everything that goes into the process, it does seem like it would be a lot to do self-distribution yeah. after you've been through all of this to do self-distribution as well. It's, it's a whole nother job in itself. That's why they have distributors. Not only is it a whole other job, but it's 10 times the amount of effort and skill as to making the movie. And mm. filmmakers who watch this say, oh, what are you, crazy? Do you know what it takes to make a movie? And I say, yes, I, I do know, because I've made seven of them. Do you know what it takes to sell a movie, to self-distribute? How many of you self-distribute it you know, successfully? It's a gigantic task to self-distribute. And it takes years and years to, to do it properly. And so you're right. Um, that's why going into this with your eyes open now that you see the, the entire process of the business and not just the making, the glamorous making of the movie, but seeing how to actually monetize it and profit from it, it that's the reality. It's good that you, you know, like you said, you know, now you are informed of what the whole process is. So now you got to choose. And if you do choose to go forward, which I can tell you, making a film and selling it, if it's successful, is one of the greatest things you can do. It's really a fun thing. But if you do choose to go forward, you got your eyes open and you know how to plan for it properly. You know how to prepare. You know what to expect. You know what's waiting for you around the corner. And hopefully you can avoid making a lot of the rookie errors that you don't have to make just because, one, we had this discussion. And hopefully, two, you surround yourself with good people, like you said, who have already been down this road and, and are going to help you not make those errors. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, it's just something that, you know, you got to surround yourself with good people and then, you know, maybe after two, three movies, then you can maybe start to implement some things that that you've um, observed. Yeah, you know? and learned along the way. 